In second grade, we solved problems using two operations, addition and subtraction. In third grade, we're learning two new operations, multiplication and division. Whereas addition and subtraction involve putting together and taking apart, multiplication and division deal with information around equal groups of objects. Equal groups of objects are when each group has the same amount, such as this example. So let's start by taking a look at multiplication. Multiplication is just an efficient way to solve long, repeated addition problems. You can quickly multiply instead of adding and adding and adding. All right, here's an example. There are eight birds. Each bird has two wings. How many wings do the birds have in all? We could add up to find the total number of wings, but that takes a lot of time. Since we know that they're equal groups, we can just write a multiplication problem, such as 8 times 2, and then just quickly solve that one problem, knowing 8 times 2 is 16. In multiplication, the two numbers that you multiply together are called factors. This first factor represents the number of groups, or I should say it usually represents the number of groups. We'll talk a little bit more about how it can represent something else in the commutative property video. But usually the first factor represents the number of groups. The second factor represents the size of each group, or how many are in each group. So for example, in 8 times 2, we can read this problem as 8 groups of 2, or 8 groups with 2 in each group, or 8 twos. The answer in a multiplication problem is called the product, and the product just represents the total. Let's look at another problem that we would use multiplication to solve. Sam went to the store and bought some books. As he left the store, he was carrying six bags that each held four books. How many books did Sam buy at the bookstore? Again, we could solve this by solving the repeated addition problem, adding four plus four plus four plus four plus four plus four, plus four but we know that that would not be efficient. It wouldn't be quick. So we can instead represent it with a multiplication problem. So I know there are six groups with four in each group. So my multiplication sentence would be six times four because remember the first factor always represents the number of groups and the second factor represents the size of each group. So I know that the problem said there were six bags. That tells me how many groups there are and it said they each held four books. That's where I got the size from. So I can solve this problem by quickly skip counting by fours. 4, 8, 12, 16, 20, 24. So instead of adding and then adding and adding and adding, we have a much more efficient problem. So the product is 24, so Sam bought 24 books at the bookstore. Now there's one quick thing to note. So when students were learning about addition in kindergarten through second grade, we didn't just expect them to memorize their addition facts right away and instantly know what 8 plus 7 is from memory, for example. We wanted them to understand what addition meant and then have lots of practice modeling addition problems. Then as they gained that conceptual understanding, we taught them different strategies and tricks to solve these problems quickly in their heads, such as this problem, make a 10. Uh, that then served as a foundation for solving more difficult problems using the same strategies. So using the make a 10 strategy for 8 plus 7, they could then apply that for 48 plus 27 to make an easier problem to solve mentally. So just as we did with addition, we're not asking our scholars to just memorize their multiplication facts. We want them to have a solid understanding of what these problems represent. And we want them to learn different strategies and properties that will help them multiply more efficiently and solve more efficient problems down the road. By the end of the year, students should be able to fluently multiply and divide. They should have their multiplication facts memorized again by the end of the year. Thank you for watching.